Hello and welcome to the Criticulus. I'm the Monk, and today we are in Mountain Blade, uh, Bannerlords 2, and we are still currently at war. We are also looking to make a little bit of money. Now, we have been at war for quite a few episodes. In fact, we have been in back to back wars ever since we created our kingdom now our kingdom is shaping up shaping up to be pretty awesome and um, we in the last couple of episodes have been scoring a good amount of war score against the western empire we've been involved in a few battles and because of this we have acquired a lot of gear now i do need to sell all of this extra gear into the shops around town i also need to start smithing um smithing is going to be rather important in fact i'm after this episode gets done i'm going to be putting in all of the groundwork for smithing if you want to know anything about smith smithing please let me know down in the comments i've also done several guides i've also dedicated several episodes to smithing as well it's a big huge complicated subject but once you get rolling it is the single best way to print money um i am looking rather low on money at the moment at least lower than i would be comfortable with i would love to go to war against Britannia and before I start that war I kind of need to end this war I also need enough money to bankroll that and potentially steal a couple of clans away from Britannia I feel like they are reasonably small so I think that I should be able to get a good amount from them now we are still earning war score still going up against the western empire I'm not going to bother moving my trebuchets into reserve like I've told so many people to do so we have a very good engineer and she is able to build these siege weapons damn quick and um, because of that we're able to just straight up go head to head against the catapults that the um that the castles are producing if they were producing ballistica maybe a little bit different but we seem to be doing okay as we are but yeah so that is the general idea of what we're doing it doing earning some more score earning some money i would like to do smithing if i'm gonna do smithing i need to clean up my inventory any swords and pikes and melee weapons that we actually get of course during any of these battles we will not be selling we will be smithing them we will be um dismantling them hopefully earning some new recipes and of course some extra materials for us to use when smithing a little bit later now i will probably be doing a little bit of smithing within the next episode only a little bit mind i will or i will be doing um a load of selling selling the swords i would like to do an episode where i tell you about the best recipes um around now i do actually have a character with i believe almost every single part unlocked for every single different weapon so that's something i could do if you're interested in that let me know down in the comments and i'll make sure that, that is a priority video that i sought um but yeah well thank you for joining me in yet another episode guys don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel hitting that subscribe button is so important it helps me out so so much and of course don't forget to comment anything in the video honestly interaction with these videos helps more than you'll know um and it is an encouragement it helps the algorithm and it means that you'll get more content out um as soon as i can possibly make it now i'm having a little go with my bow i figured it would be a good idea to get the bow back out um i kind of retired it i haven't needed it so much i certainly haven't been doing any castle defense like i thought i would which is why i got my bow up to the way i did um, so we got the bow back again as you just saw i just got a rather good kill scoring 87 damage with that single shot quite happy with that if you ask me um i think in order to get more points in a bow i am going to need to put points into it 
I'm not going to do so. I just, you know, want the bow just to help give me those extra options and be a little bit more deadlier on the battlefield. Now, as you just saw, I just got out my rather, rather snazzy two-handed slash one-handed sword. Now, I did actually have someone comment asking me what the recipe for this sword was. Now, I actually made this sword um, during this Let's Play. It was actually, you know, during one of these episodes that I made it. So if you have watched the series, then you know exactly where this sword has come from. Um, I absolutely made it within one of these episodes. It's a really, really handy weapon. Um, in fact, I think the sword you actually unlock is actually a tier four sword. So it's not something that is particularly difficult to um, unlock. And I think I actually unlocked this particular sword um, as one of the first tier four um, blade options I actually got. I was kind of annoyed that I didn't get a kill with that sword at the end there, hence why I tried to kick my own man off a wall. I think that's actually an achievement as well, to kick someone off a wall and to kill him that way. Um, not something I've actually managed to do during combat just yet. I think it may actually be while you are protecting um, your castle during a siege that that um, achievement is activated. I'm going to have to go through the achievements and see if that's one I've got um, or what the actual stipulations about it is. I quite like going after random achievements and this game certainly has a couple of them. Now, where to go? As you can see, we're actually moving along with quite a horde to 2,000, I kind of wish, 1,222 troops. Now, that's not bad. Um, it's not the best, but it's certainly not bad. We've got a little bit more recruiting to do as well. We could have a few more now it does worry me because that is one of the biggest armies i can actually recruit with my with my kingdom and i know for a fact that there are some monstrous armies around this map so i do need to try and recruit some more clans and we do need a little bit of time of having um no war a little bit of peace time so that way the clans can kind of protect themselves warm up get the garrison sorted get their parties restocked and and all that jazz now as you saw we just gave the castle we just won to another clan now that clan didn't have um didn't have a, a any kind of property and i've said it in every single video that i've done which involves who to give your castles to um now it would be nice to be up for nomination for all of it but if there are clans without land typically you will not be on that list because everyone wants some land they use all their influence they can possible to get more land um, and therefore if there is a clan option there which tells you um, that they don't have any land. It's a really, really good idea to, well, you know, give them some land, help give yourself a balanced kingdom. Now, I feel like we should have had enough war score. Um, for some reason, um, I don't think it popped up saying that we won the war. I feel like we had enough war score, so I popped in, paid the influence, and it turns out that we already did. Now, something's gone here because the Western Empire are now paying us money, even though I was I was kind of hoping that that would be the case. Um, but I didn't see a notification saying, hey, can you... Oh, I see. I see where I have gone wrong. So I kind of jumped the gun on the right hand side there. It did look like I did actually have a notification. Now, I'm kind of betting that that notification was that the Western Empire was suing for peace. I'm not exactly sure when that popped up. I should have had a look at it beforehand. Um... So when I went to propose peace, because I was assuming I had enough war score to actually, you know, get that peace where they gave me money, um, 
uh, well, I could have done that for free. In other words, I didn't have to pay the influence I did to declare peace. The moral of this story is pay better attention to the prompts that the game offers you. The good news is we do actually have yet another nation that is paying us tribute per day. So that's yet another nation that we was paying tribute that we are now not paying tribute. And in fact, roles have reversed and they now are paying us tribute because we are, of course, the better kingdom. Now, there's a couple of things here. First of all, I no longer needed to be in an army, which is why I disbanded my army. Number two, it does mean that I, my lords do actually get that time of peace that I was just talking about, meaning that they can actually sort out their lands before we go back at war. Number three, we actually get the opportunity now to go to war with the people that we want to be in that Britannia. Um, I do need a little bit of prep before I need to do that. All my parties need to make sure they have the optimal level of troops. I also need to make sure I have enough money because as I said earlier in the video, what I would love to do is actually poach a couple of extra clans from Britannia. Now, I feel like they are one of the smaller um empires left smaller kingdoms left therefore they look at me those clans as a you know exciting opportunity to get some more land so i think that they are ripe for the taking um so a little bit more recruitment is needed but before i can recruit i am gonna need a little bit more money hence why i need to start selling all of my goods and of course now i'm not at war it means i actually have the freedom to go about and actually sell some goods which is pretty cool um of course i need to be on the eye out for some decent buys in the shop as well we did actually do some pretty good leveling when it comes to our trade as well so when it comes to deals we can have plenty of them Now, we have an awful lot of livestock. Now, a smart man would have slaughtered all of them. Um, but for a quick buck, why not just sell them? Yeah, we had an awful lot of livestock, which is quite cool. Now, livestock is something you do actually need to pay attention to because you have too much livestock that's going to interact with your herd penalty i'm sure all of you are familiar with herd penalties if you have too many troops if you have too many horses um it's going to affect your herd penalty quite a lot now uh, it's going to slow down your party quite a lot um having lots and lots of horses is a great idea you've got horses for speed you've got horses for pack weight in other words the amount of materials that you can bring along with you without having without being encumbered um so having you know lots of horses of both kinds is a really good idea however that does affect your herd penalty i believe it's 1.5 i believe you're going to have 1.5 times your troops so if you have 300 troops you could have you know 300 plus that extra 50 percent before you start having anything uh interfere with your herd penalty but your livestock your cows your pigs your sheep that then also adds up to your herd penalty so if you have too much livestock that's going to seriously slow you down and of course if you're running around in an army like i was that's also going to slow me down quite badly as well now like i said we are going to be doing a little bit of prep in this video and that means we are going to be smelting down all of our hardwood into charcoal now hardwood into charcoal is a really really good idea if you get that first perk in the smithing line you can actually get three charcoal from two wood which is fantastic it's also a great way to actually level up your companions and if you didn't know already every single companion in your in your party can be used as a smith as you can see i just click on their little face and then select whichever companion i want now that's family members and of course companions that you buy a 
buy or hire in the tavern all of them can be used whether they have skill in it or not if you get them up to i believe it is 25 um skill then you can of course get that very first perk turn them all into charcoal makers at least that is a top tip for anyone looking to smith because you're always going to need charcoal and you're never going to have enough charcoal so having multiple characters that can actually make that charcoal and oh, i do mean make it as in with the two hardwood into three charcoal and not the two wood into or is it three wood into a single charcoal that's painful but leveling them up is a great great thing to do highly recommend it and if you want to level them up i wouldn't level them up from making the charcoal before that level 20 25 um, but actually smelting down weapons is probably the better way to do it you earn extra recipes i think you earn a little bit more experience this way as well well, we're going to smelt down as many goods as possible. Everything that we can smelt down here will get us materials that we can use, whether it's more wood, whether it's more metal, whatever it is, it's going to be materials that we can use. Now, we're at the stage where we can actually turn out pretty good two-handed swords. Now, what that means is that we don't necessarily need the lesser materials, but with a few extra levels and a few extra perks you can actually turn those lesser materials into better materials you can refine them um, which is a pretty handy skill if you don't have the money to go around the towns and buying up those better weapons if you don't have the troops to win those and bigger battles where you're getting all of those more and more better weapons then it's you know refining your materials is another good thing you can do it's helpful um, it's something that is really helpful if you learn how to do it for anyone looking to smith um and looking to really get into it and want a bit of a time saver i would have at least two companions helping you along the way don't forget you don't have to be the smith you don't need to have those levels but having you know two to three good smiths in your party if you plan to be a smither is a really really good idea because it, one character can only really choose one perk at a time without you know having to reset those perks and sometimes you could use both perks so having one smith you know take a series of one perks and then the other smith be able to have all those opposite perks is a really really good idea having a you know bona fide refiner absolutely great idea having a bona fide um smith that is going to smelt down all the weapons that's also a really good idea because there are perks in both that allow them to do more of that in one go without having to constantly rest uh, resting to earn back um smithing stamina can be really annoying and in fact it's the one thing that truly slows down smithing so having those extra smiths remembering that you can use your entire party in order to smith is so so helpful and will uh, you'll find that you'll be able to go a lot quicker uh, doing it than just using that one main character now when i very first started and i say started um but we are talking like 200 hours in 300 hours in before i realized that you could actually switch party members when smithing so you know me giving you that information my god that is a tip i wish i knew a lot sooner uh not something the game ever really tells you it is something you have to figure out um, but that same kind of tip is really for everything in a game you know when it comes to trading for instance you can you know switch character depending on which one you want to be trading with so um it's really really bloody handy now the azari are someone that i also don't want to be at war with we haven't 
done anything um, to them. They haven't done anything to us. Sturgia are kind of just rats to us right now. They're not really doing anything and they can't really do anything more than raid. Unfortunately, this is where we are with Sturgia until the next update comes out. When the next update comes out, they will very, very quickly disappear. Um, it's something that, again, people have asked me about. You know, when is that next update? Unfortunately, at the moment, there is no clue about when that next update comes. When it does come, though, it's going to put an end to that incessant, um, never-ending war when it comes to the Dragon Banner. Because, of course, if anyone's done that, then no. When you defeat a nation like we have defeated Sturgeon right now, they are kind of just a plague amongst you. There's not much you can do. Every now and again, um, the smaller tribes the smaller kingdoms that have no land whatsoever they migrate across the map so it's not as if they're going to be bugging us forever at the moment um they are raiding us and being kind of annoying uh, eventually they'll probably go to war with someone else they'll get some land somewhere else um, and there's not too much we can do about that unfortunately But this update is set to end all of that, along with it bringing us console commands as well. Console commands look very, very fun. Um, we have had a discussion about it extensively throughout the Discord. The link is down in the description, of course, for anyone that wants to join. Uh, Bannerlords is by far the most active thread we actually have. So if you do want to find people to talk to about this game, the Discord is a great place to do that. Um, but the console commands look really, really cool. I've seen one where it suggests that we're able to complete all buildings within any one city. So, for instance, your throne city, you can complete every single building, have an absolute behemoth of a of a throne city. And it sounds pretty, you know, it's going to be an instant type of thing. These are cheats after all. Another one's going to be to add money. So for people that are struggling with the game, for people that do not want to, you know, embark on that 100-hour mission for smithing, um, then just to add money to their game, it's going to be so useful for them. Um, now, I'm not saying that's something that I particularly I'm going to be using too much, but I can see it having huge uses. So there are some people that don't have hours upon hours to plunge into a game that just want things now and, you know, right now. So I don't blame them whatsoever in fact pc have had this for a very very long time marty who is a founder of the channel um you know every time he pops into bannerlords that's one of the first things he does is give himself money and give himself as much money as possible because he doesn't have the time to sit there you know figure out trading or figure out smithing he just wants to play the game win the battles wage the wars and so i don't blame him and i think that it's definitely something that needs adding to the game console needs as much support as pc so i'm really glad to see that this is a feature that is coming to the game and a feature that should be coming in the very next update it's also nice to see um, that those that have created banner laws haven't given up on console too often and not what happens is the game's released and then just forgotten about once it's on console um, so it's you know, especially if it is a pc port so it's really good to see that this game is being developed and worked upon and improved now what we're trying to do at the moment obviously is you know, just try and gather as many troops as possible um i need to make sure that all my parties are sorted out as i said i'm preparing for another war in order to prepare for another war i'm going to need to sort out my infantry i'm going to need to do a bit of smithing and i'm going to need to pay better attention to all of my parties and make sure that they are all up to date and ready to go 
Britannia have some of the best cities in the game with the highest prosperity. They are in a key location. They are also on my list, as in on my list of kingdoms that I need to go to war with, that I need to make sure that I am no longer paying rent, basically, to be a kingdom. Now, they are not Vlandia. Vlandia are on the list as well. They're probably top of that list. I'm paying them an obscene amount of money but they are also the biggest kingdom in the game i don't want to go to war with them just yet because i don't know if i'm gonna be able to win i need to recruit some more clans i need to get some more land i need to have a better claim in the world before a fight valandia when i do fight valandia when i do win that will essentially be the end of of this let's play and this let's play has stretched for a very long time we have done some amazing things within this let's play but it is going to be time for a brand new let's play and i'm kind of excited because there are lots of possibilities and i feel like what i'm gonna do is possibly even take this character that i have right now strip him of everything he has no infantry whatsoever no money whatsoever and no companions no troops have him be paraded around as a slave um essentially and then start from ground up i'm also going to leave the kingdom as well and we're going to see just how that kingdom actually performs um as we go about our merry way trying to get some money back trying to get some gear back um so yeah i think it's going to be quite fun i'm looking forward to it is what it is another video coming up for anyone interested in what videos we're going to be doing within banner lords is going to be starting a game with absolutely nothing now i had a guy in the discord tell me the he essentially didn't know what to do. He felt like his game was broken. He started the game. He'd been playing for a few hours. Uh, he had lost two bandits right at the beginning of the game, spent some time as their prisoner, had no money, had no troops, and didn't know how to make a go of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start the game with absolutely nothing in the worst possible situation. And we're going to see how we do, how I would recover, what I would recommend, and basically a how-to guide for beginners. So if anyone started to watch this series right now um, and you've just started the game, then hopefully there is a video coming up that you might be interested in. I know we've all kind of found this game and started at the very beginning and kind of done the wrong things and it's very easy to go around executing lords you know and pick it on parties that you just can't basically beat at the beginning of this game um and i think the beginner guide videos are really useful but there we go that is a nava party member all sorted out this is my brother he has got a very very good march size i kind of need to go through my um my companions my family and find the better guys with the bigger march size my brother is obviously one reason why i'd always recommend going campaign over sandbox because he is a ridiculously good companion that you get he's almost a cheat code in his own right because you can do so much with him um but i'm also jealous that he has such a good mark size now of course i have better but i need more of him and i need more companions with better mark sizes as well we also need to get up to clan tier five as you can see we're currently clan tier four we are so close to clan tier five i've been talking about it for the last three episodes how close we are once we do hit clan tier three we will also get a slightly bigger mark size which i'm really looking forward to i also want to level up to put an extra point into um, the ability to get a better leadership now we are so close to more leadership um, and i feel like we're going to get a pretty huge march size with this character within the next few episodes just need to give it our time need to gather that little bit of experience it's never quick in this game um, and you do need a lot of patience now this is my younger brother my youngest brother he 
has obviously grown up now. He's able to lead his own party and he has a march size of 108, which isn't great. But I am hoping that given a little bit of time that he can be as good as his brother, if not better. I mean, that's highly doubtful as the brother does have some obscene stats, um, but he does need a little bit of time as a party leader does this one. Those Valandian banner law, um, knights are so, so good. Um, Valandians have the best cavalry in the game. Um, anyone that says otherwise, let me know down in the comments what is the best cavalry unit in the game. Um, for me, it is the Valandians. They have the best cavalry, and I would like to recruit a little bit more, um, especially as we already have the best um, archers having the best cavalry would go a long way to ensure that we are doing a good job and when it comes to fighting the Valandians my god are we going to need a decent cavalry because that is going to be key but guys I think I'm going to end this video right here we have done actually quite a lot in this episode because we earned enough war score to earn a decent victory with the Western Empire. That is a war that has been going on for a little while now. We have won that war. And of course, we are now preparing for our next war. Now, I do think we still need a little bit of time. I am off camera now. I am going to do a little bit more smithing. Um, I'm going to get us a little bit more money or at least enough of the swords ready to sell. Um, and of course, we have now prepped all of our party members as well. So that's another thing. Good and golden. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode, guys, because I believe we're going to go to war with Britannia or at least look at that possibility. But until next time, guys, I've been a monk with Minicrus at Eucurus, and I'll see you in the next video real soon. If you watched to the very end of this video, guys, you're a legend. Thank you for supporting this channel so much. It is really appreciated. But until next time, I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.